Welcome back everybody to part 18 of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. For this video, you will need to download the projectile sprites from the link in the description below in order to make our boss fire laser beams from his eye. I hope you've all been successful in the homework task from the last video of preparing your walking and death animation for the boss. If you haven't, do not worry. No stress, you've got plenty of time. And when you're all ready, let's crack on. Before we get into the cool stuff and start making our boss fire his projectiles, we must first prepare the projectile sprites in our sprite sheet here, in the same way we have been doing throughout this project. And when you're ready, hit Sprite Editor, and let's slice these up. Now, unlike last time, we're not gonna go to slice and separate by cell size. We're gonna do it manually by clicking and dragging a box around our sprite. I'm gonna finish this third one. I've already done the first two, and then you can give it a name. These will be our hit effect. There we go. And this one here will be our laser. The best thing to do is to make sure that it's nice and tight around the sprite, and name this one our laser. That's each individual one now sliced up nice and cleanly. And when you're ready, hit apply. And let's go back and check that our sprites are all prepared. There we go. We have our free hit effects and our laser. And when the boss fires the laser and it hits a surface, it will instantiate our hit effect. And that will be a simple little animation. So drag our hit effect one into the scene. Let's zoom in for a closer look by double tapping. And let's create an animation for this. Go to animation, create, in the animation folder, of course, and we'll call this one hit effect. There we go. This will be a simple animation, and all we're going to do is drag each sprite in sequence onto a frame, and we'll make it play quite fast by giving it quite a high sample rate. So let's go ahead and give it a sample rate of 12 for now. Let's have a little test to see what that looks like. That looks fine. That will do for our hit effect animation. Then I would like you to go to the animations folder, find the hit effect animation, and turn off loop time, as we don't want this to repeat. We only want this to play once and then disappear. That is everything done for our hit effect. So let's go and drag it into our prefabs folder, make it a prefab, and we can go ahead and delete this now in our scene. Now we're gonna work on the laser. So let's go to our laser sprite, drag it into the scene, double click to get a good view, make sure it's reset, and we're gonna add some components to this. And which components will they be? Much like everything else we've been using up to now, we need to add a box collider 2D so it can make contact and kill the player. We'll make it a trigger, of course, just like the enemies, because that's how this object is going to behave exactly the same way. So let's add the enemy tag and the enemy layer to our laser. There we go. We're going to move the laser by applying a force to it when it's shot from the eyeball. So to do that, we will also need a rigid body 2D component. So add that just like so. Leave it as dynamic, but we don't want the lasers to be shot and then immediately arc and hit the floor. So turn the gravity to zero. There we go. And we're not done just yet. The last thing we have to do is add a script to the laser. So let's create a new C-sharp script and we shall call it laser, simple as. And when it's compiled, let's drag that and add it to the laser object and then open up our laser script. Like we mentioned before, when the laser hits a surface or another object, it will instantiate our hit effect animation. In order to do that, we must make a reference to a game object that will be the hit effect. So type in public game object, capital G, capital O, and we'll call it our hit effects. There we go. And of course, this will only instantiate when we hit another object. So we're gonna get rid of update and start. And in their place, we're gonna have a private void and it will be an on trigger enter 2D, and we can rename collision to other for our convenience's sake. There we go. 
So when the laser collider triggers and enters another game object's collider, things will happen. And the first thing, of course, will be to instantiate our laser hit effect. And we're going to do this by creating a game object variable, which we will call effect, and I will equal instantiate. Instantiate is another word essentially which means to spawn, to spawn something into the scene. And that something in the brackets, of course, will be the hit effect game object, the transform.position of that game object, and the rotation of that game object. In the last video, I mentioned that quaternion is just an overly complicated term to describe rotation. So quaternion.identity basically says that whatever the rotation of the instantiated object, that's its rotation. Now spawning in our hit effect from our laser shot is all well and good, but once the animation is played, that game object is still going to be present in the scene. And over time, that can cause a lot of performance issues if there are millions of hit effects still lying around the scene. We won't be able to see them because the animation's played, but they will still be there. So we need to destroy them. And we're going to do that by typing in destroy, then in the brackets, our effect. And we're going to do that over time. Now, we set a sample rate on our hit effect of 12 frames. And I think that lasts for about point three of a second. So let's destroy the effect after 0.3f and then end with a semicolon. And of course, we also want to destroy the laser object itself. And to do that, we'll use simply destroy game object. There we go. So to recap, we're going to instantiate an effect that will be the hit effect. Then once the animation is played, it will destroy the instantiated effect as well as the laser being destroyed on contact. That's all for the laser. So let's save that now and head back into Unity. And once everything has compiled, select the laser object and let's go down in the inspector to laser script. And there you will see it's asking for the game object, which is the hit effect. So in the prefabs folder, drag your hit effect into the box and that's all for the laser. So let's go and create a prefab of the laser and then we can simply remove the laser from the scene. And now let's get working on having our boss fire our projectiles. So let's get a good view of the level. Let's go back to game view and let's create a new C sharp script and we will call this one the boss controller boss controller. This will control all the movement and actions for the boss. Getting the boss to fire the projectiles is a lot more complicated than setting up the projectile itself. Do you remember the fire point object we created on the eye in the last video? That will be the point in which the shots are from. So that will be the first variable we punch in. So I'll go ahead and talk you through each one. So first of all, we need to make a public transform to the fire point, which we'll name fire point there. So that's on the eye object. Then what is it we're going to instantiate? We're going to shoot. Well, that will be a public game object and it will be the shot prefab, the laser prefab. We also want to apply a force. So we have a public float shot force, which will apply that force to the rigid body on the laser prefab. And then we may want to also determine the rate of fire. So here we have a public float, which will be time between shots. And then I have serialized this field so we can see it in action in the inspector. And that will be a private float, which will be a shot timer, which will basically mean that when the shot timer hits zero, initiate a shot. So let's kick things off in the start function here by stating that the shot timer will equal the value that will be the time between shots. This is so when the scene starts, our boss doesn't immediately fire a shot. There will be a little cooldown before the shot timer hits zero. And how is it the shot timer is counting down? That will be done in the update function where we will say that the shot timer is minus equal 
to time dot delta time. So it's ticking down every frame. Then underneath, we're going to create an if statement. I'm going to say if shot timer is less than or equal to zero. So if the timer hits zero or goes below it, then we want to instantiate our shot. And in order to instantiate a shot, we're going to have to create a shoot function. So underneath our void update, let's create a void and we'll call it shoot. There we go. And much like the name of the function, the first thing we want to do when this is called is to instantiate our prefab. And we're going to do that the exact same way as we did with the hit effect on the laser by creating a game object variable, which we will call laser, followed by instantiate, and in the brackets, the object we want to instantiate, that will be our shot prefab, our game object there in the variables. And it will be shot from the firepoint.position and the firepoint.rotation, the origin point from where the shot will be fired. Now instantiating the shot is all well and good, but they're not gonna go anywhere unless we apply that shot force. So underneath, let's create another variable, which will be rigid body 2 d and we'll name it RB2D or the RB2D, whichever you like. And that's gonna equal the laser game object that has been instantiated. So in other words, the laser prefab, the shot prefab, and we want to get the component of the laser which will be the rigid body 2D. So we'll say that the laser dot get component rigid body 2D, because of course we're going to apply physics to it. And how we do that isn't that complicated as it's something we've already done here before. We're going to say that the RB 2D dot add force. So we're going to add the force to it. Then in the brackets, the direction we want the shot to go. And that'll be from the fire point dot up so we get a straight shot from the fire point and we will multiply that by the shot force then after the comma force mode 2d dot impulse so that force is instantaneously and that is all for the shoot function so we can go ahead back in update within the if statement and insert our shoot function there we go so when the shot timer is less than or equal to zero Shoot function is called and it will fire our shot. However, that's not all because we also want to reset the shot timer to be equal to time between shots. And we already have that written here. So just above shoot, let's just type in that the shot timer equals time between shots. So we're resetting that timer every time it hits zero. Otherwise, it will be an absolute bullet hell nightmare. Save that code now, and let's head back into Unity and start seeing all this in action. Back in the editor now, let's zoom in on our boss, and let's tidy up that fire point by opening it up. Boss eye, fire point, and we can afford to lower it just a little bit in front of the eye. It'll look a lot better when we fire the laser shot. Speaking of which, let's go to prefabs, double check the laser. In the order layer here, I think we can comfortably set that as one. So it's not going to hide behind any objects in the scene. Let's go back. And now on the boss, let's add the boss controller script and start setting him up to be a real threat. So there you can see in the inspector, we have a box there asking for the transform of the fire point, which we have on the eye. So we'll put the fire point down. And of course it needs a shot prefab as well. And we have that in the form of our laser. So we'll pop that in there like so. Now for shot force, time between shots, you can experiment, have a crack at it, whatever's comfortable for you. For now, I'm gonna have put a comfortable shot force of seven and a time between shots of three seconds for now. We don't have to put anything in the shot timer as that will equal three upon commencing the scene and then we'll count down and reset back to three every cycle. And finally, to avoid our lasers being destroyed and triggered by the boss's own hurt box, let's go to edit, project settings, consult the layer collision matrix, and under hurt box, let's untick the enemy box there, just to be on the safe side. 
And when you're ready, give it a save, hit play, and check it out. And there we are. His eyes are locked on us. And after the timer counts down, he fires a shot. And he'll do that every three seconds. And we can just jump and avoid the shots. Let's get hit by one. Yep, we die just the same. Excellent. All right. That is working exactly as we want it to. Let's go back into Unity. And let's get ready for the next video. Where we're going to learn how to make our enemy move in a certain way. Similar to how Bowser moves in the original Super Mario Brothers. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You can have fun experimenting with this code by changing the time between shots rate of fire. Do you want it to be a, a bullet hell? Or do you want it to be a more comfortable boss to begin with? It's entirely up to you. And you can even place platforms around this level for cover as well to save your player from being shot from a stray laser. It's entirely up to you. Experiment. Go crazy. And should you need any assistance whatsoever, do feel free to get in touch with us on our Instagram or Twitter. And below in the description will be links for the sprite sheets and copies of the scripts in this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, guys. All the best, and I will see you soon.